My name is Steve Jones. I'm the president of the Canadian National Robot Games. I'm Blair Clarkson. I'm the coordinator of special events and attractions here at the Ontario Science Centre. And I've developed the robotics theme here over about the last seven or eight years. When I started doing these games eight years ago. Uh, I wanted a competition that was uh, available for the public to come watch as well as for anybody to compete in. Robotics is a great way to interest, you know, kids and adults, uh, you know, people of all ages um, in science and technology. One of our more exciting events is Sumo, and uh, I think the audience finds it exciting because it's two robots head to head, and we it takes place in a circular ring, and uh, like the Japanese competition is named after, uh, the two robots face each other and try and have to push it the, its opponent head without falling out of the rings himself. Once the match is on, the robots are on their own, they have to think for themselves. So they have sensors for detecting the edge as well as the sensors for detecting the, uh, their opponent. Um, another competition we have, line following. Um, uh, as it says, we have robots that have to follow a black line that's on a white background. So the robot has to differentiate between the white and black. Uh, the courses can be quite complex with uh, obtuse or uh, uh, acute angles and uh, with spaces and whatnot. So, uh, and it's a time factor as well as uh, complexity. So uh, that one could be very complex. Another competition, firefighting, uh, which was originally uh, started by Trinity College in the U.S. It's a mock-up, uh, eight foot square mock-up of a floor of a house with, eight, uh, with four rooms. And in the uh, one room, a candle is uh, randomly placed and the robot has a starting position, has to leave the starting position, find the candle, blow it out, and return to home in the quickest period of time. Search and Rescue is a relatively uh, new addition to our competition. I think this is the third year for Search and Rescue. It was something we started to, to get more uh, younger kids involved, uh, something that can be done relatively inexpensively. Um, it's basically a radio controlled robot that you direct through a maze simulating uh, like what an ETF robot would do for the police department or whatnot if there was someone in a, a building that had collapsed and, and they're still alive in the building you have to send the robot in, find the victim and drag them in. So uh, again, so the, the robot's navigates through this maze, finds the teddy bear and then drags the teddy bear back in. spirit and opportunity that everyone has heard about for the last kind of four or five years um, the folks who develop those and, and who actually control them you know basically uh, with NASA are people who as kids 15 you know 10 15 years ago they were the kids who were doing the first robot competitions right now I am in I'm a space engineering major at York University I'm in my third year yeah, we call it a Torsaurus. So basically what it can do, the functionality is that um, it would do whatever uh, Mars rover would do on Mars, or on the moon for instance. Right? Robotics is a, um, a key kind of breakthrough area for now and in the future, and that the kids who are doing uh, well in it are the engineers and the scientists who are going to be the leaders um, tomorrow.
robotics has been uh, identified as one of the key trends that much like uh, computers were the, were the breakthrough technology of the 20th century, robotics has been identified as the breakthrough technology of the 21st century. I am Android, and I was created by Trungla. I am the first Canadian Android to make a public appearance. Uh, basically, um, uh, it's my, for my hobby, I like to make uh, build robots since I was four. Uh, this time I built uh, an Android which look almost like human and trying to mimic human behavior. So it could basically do basic stuff like face recognition, up recognition, uh, it could do soft math, colors, it can feel pain sensations. I do not like it when you touch my breasts. And she can do weather access the weather stations, uh, she could, uh, if you have access to the net, she could MSN your friend to cancel your going to the movie, or, or she even show directions, so she, she can be used as a receptionist or as like a, at an information desk, or she could use just basically for at home when you have like a grandparents who can't um, open the door anymore, so when you come, she recognize family members, she will Transmit the, the software will transmit into the, the door and lock the door for you. For like example, my grandmother, she can't read anymore, so I have her to read newspaper for her. I go process reading. CE Chirlis SN and Summary. In the near future, personal computers take the form of attractive women and men. Uh, this is basically my hobby I do from the basement. The problem is that when I do video the demo from my home, I send to a corporation and the problem with that is people say it's fake CG or Photoshop. They, even large corporations say that it looks like uh, CG from Hollywood, please do not spam us. So it's pretty hard to uh, to prove your, your, your invention. So hopefully public appearance like Science Center, uh, it proved to people that it's not Photoshop, it's real, and yeah, they could call material science just to prove that it was here. It's real, you could touch it, <laughs> not on some monitor. It's, it's probably the technology that is going to change um, the most aspects of people's day-to-day -day lives, and yet most people don't realize that yet. I found government uh, participation and support to be extremely poor. Canada is recognized as a world leader in space robotics. The uh, Canadian shuttle arm, uh, arm on the International Space Station, even the, the shuttle inspection boom was basically developed and, and created and engineered by Canadian scientists and engineers. So it just depends on the government and how they do it.